Today on 10 Minute IT Jams, we have Scott Hesford, who is the sales engineer for Beyond Trust. So welcome to the jam, Scott. Hello, how are you going? Very good, thank you. Um, so this is our second IT Jam with Beyond Trust. And today we're gonna to be talking about your key products and offerings and um, critical infrastructure and um, how Beyond Trust factors into that. So yeah, first question is, um, yeah, for a business that hasn't worked with Beyond Trust before, what are your key products and offerings? Yeah, so um, Beyond Trust is a uh, worldwide leader in privileged access management. Um, I'll call it PAM. Um, so we offer a uh, wide variety of integrated products uh, within that space. Um, so it's all about really controlling who has access to what, from where and when. Um, that's across uh, both uh, on-premise, cloud and in hybrid. Um, so all different types of environments, including IT and OT environments as well. Um, so we uh, have a universal privilege management story um, that really protects um, privileges across passwords, endpoints, uh, workstations, servers, um, and it also gives organizations visibility and control um, across those environments as well. Um, ultimately, the idea is to secure uh, the environment and also boost operational uh, efficiencies as well. Um, so yeah, we uh, cover off uh, endpoint privilege management, um, privilege password management, uh, and secure remote access. Cool. So yeah, what trends are you seeing um, both at a global level, but also within uh, the Asia Pacific region? Yeah, so we've started to see uh, a lot more compliance mandates um, come through. Um, there's always been a lot of compliance, but there's been even more focus recently uh, in the light of summer. Uh, attacks on critical infrastructure. Um, so really started off back in May, uh, President Biden uh, signed off in a presidential um, executive order that aimed at uh, improving the country's cybersecurity posture and threat intelligence. Um, at the same time, that did have a little bit of focus on critical infrastructure as well. Uh, in APJ, uh, we are starting to see a um, little bit more legislation around the um, critical infrastructure bill 2020. Um, which really uh, kind of takes the previous one uh, a little bit further in terms of what we need to do there. Um, additionally, we've found that um, the Essential 8 was just recently updated in Australia. Um, the Essential 8, they've changed some of the wording, uh, but additionally, it's actually, um, they've expanded the number of uh, agencies that do need to report to it. And uh, previously, they only had to report on the top four. Uh, and instead, now they need to report on all eight um, in the near future. Right, yeah. Um, you mentioned critical infrastructure uh, just before. So um, what kind of critical infrastructure has come into the focus um, as targets um, that you've seen? Um, and what are some examples of that? All types, actually. Um, it really has expanded um, in recent months as well. There's been a lot of really high profile attacks um, and it's not just covering off um, any particular industries. Um, we've seen attacks on um, various types. So as an example, we saw at JBS earlier in the year. Um, now, JBS was a ransomware attack. Um, and that the ultimate goal of that was to extort money, um, which they managed to do in the end. Um, we've seen um, the Colonial Pipeline. Um, so Colonial Pipeline was another ransomware attack. Um, and that one actually um, ended up uh, quite notorious um, and impacted the uh, eastern region of the United States as well. So um, that one ended up with people queuing for, uh, for petrol um, and uh, it, was, it was quite bad. Um, we're also seeing a couple others. So uh, water treatment in particular. So there was attack in Florida um, and attack in uh, California as well. Um, and what we're seeing with those, um, those are operational technology attacks. Um, they're trying to do several different things. So in one case, they were trying to gain control of the systems. Um, and in another case, they were trying to shut down um, systems. So across those examples, we've seen um, some that were trying to extort money, um, some trying to take control and others were just um, sabotage um, as well. Um, in uh, Australia, we start, we've seen um, Eastern Health so Eastern Health was a group of four hospitals uh, in the state of Victoria. Um, that attack uh, caused delays in surgery uh, and other problems for staff and patients. 
Um, in May, the FBI and the Australian Cybersecurity uh, Centre uh, issued warnings to airlines, construction, energy, freight, government, health, uh, law enforcement and other organisations regarding uh, global ransomware campaign. Um, and that included uh, Australia, China and Indonesia, so it was region wide. Um, and while we're seeing that IT systems uh, are impacted, uh, OT is, is really a, um, a vulnerable area uh, that we're starting to see more attacks within. Um, often these kinds of systems in an OT environment uh, are not necessarily designed for uh, remote access, so they don't have the same levels of security controls in place. Um, that's because they're just old in a lot of cases. They've been around a long time um, and they're just not designed for it. So um, another thing we are seeing is that um, organisations in a lot of cases are, are struggling to gain um, visibility um, into what employee access policies are, are going on and what systems are vulnerable to those attacks. Um, being able to control who has access to what is a, a particular challenge um, in a lot of these spaces. And also uh, governing um, accounts, uh, previous accounts, so older accounts that aren't being deprovisioned or shut down. Um, we're seeing a lot of that in a couple of these cases. We saw um, accounts that were active that just shouldn't have been active anymore. Um, and this is a common occurrence. Um, it's not unique to these attacks. It, it, it does happen quite a bit um, out there. Yeah, right. Um, and bringing it back to beyond trust, how is your company um, helping organizations in terms of securing their critical infrastructure? Yeah, so um, this is where our breadth of solutions can really help um, organizations. So if we take the uh, Colonial Pipeline attack, for instance, um, that came across a, a VPN uh, with a set of credentials, um, which should have been deactivated. Um, and it appears that, that the passwords were reused. Um, in a lot of cases, we do see passwords that have been breached um, you know, you go back a long way and there's many, many examples of this where um, targeted social accounts can compromise particular credentials. Um, a common entry um, platform uh, into organisations is over virtual private networks. Um, so VPNs, um, look, you can configure VPNs to um, allow site to site access to only certain um, critical systems, but um, we often see organizations struggle to really lock down a VPN, meaning that as soon as a, a person or an attacker gets on a network, um, they can shift laterally between systems. Um, so you, you can, as an organization, you can say, well, I only want them to access this particular um, system that they need access to. But attackers will often find vulnerabilities and shift to other systems that you don't want them to have access to. Um, that's a big issue. Um, so being able to um, actually have specific sets of access uh, for those users is something that Beyond Trust can do using the uh, privileged remote access solution. Um, we have actually uh, found that um, instead of using, using VPNs, if they use that, um, it really gives them control. And you know that covers off things um, such as the vault. Um, so using a vault, uh, you can store credentials within that. Um, you don't need to ever uh, allow people to see credentials to systems. Um, and that really does uh, in include, uh, or it really does expand on the security um, there. So um, in addition to that, um, we do have uh, endpoint privilege management for Windows, Mac, Unix, and Linux um, that enforce least privilege on those systems. So. A, we're govern governing who can access what, but also what they can do when they do get on those systems. Um, do they have, ac have access to stop and start services? What software can they start? Um, all these kinds of things are uh, critical to actually controlling and securing environments as well. Um, in addition, many customers choose to use our password safe uh, in conjunction with those. Um, so that reduces the risk of privilege credential misuse through automated privilege, uh, automated password control, uh, being able to do things like password rotation. Uh, as soon as a user uses a credential, they log onto a system, they then log off, um, actually changing those credentials. So they're constantly in flux, um, constantly changing. Um, you can also get 
uh, alerts on any suspicious activity. So anything going on in an environment, um, you can get alerted on those kinds of things. Um, and that's also uh, an important thing that organizations uh, need to start looking at. Awesome, yeah, perfect. Um, and finally for you, Scott, um, if an enterprise end user wanted to engage with Beyond Trust, what's the best way to do so? Yeah, so our website, um, it's just uh, beyondtrust.com. Uh, there's, there's a lot of really good information on there. So um, you can check out the blog posts. Um, they are updated regularly and they cover off um, current topics um, of interest. Um, you can find um, our Microsoft vulnerabilities report. Um, and that's a really good resource to have a look at. Um, and that's uh, research that we've published as well. Um, and there's case studies and all kinds of things on there. So definitely worth checking out. Perfect. Awesome. Well, that's it for today's interview. Thanks for joining me today, Scott. Thank you.